Hello, this is Mike Live, and you know I could not resist. I've got to talk about building 3D games for the web. And one of the cool things about 3D games on the web is that everything is getting super fast. And it really used to be slow, and they were very limited. But now with Flash 10 Player, and you've got Jiglib being updated, and the way 3D is updated to the Flash 10 Player, you're doing this, you're, you're, you're strict typing, you're throwing away a lot of the junk that's associated with some of the variables that you're using. Things are getting a lot faster, and it's very exciting. We're actually going to look at three games today. We're going to look at a cue ball. A football game and a really cool uh, Facebook game, Bowling for Buddies. And so once again, that good news, we now have native 3D for Flash developers, and it is really fun. Also going to talk about you know some techniques for actually grabbing and looking at resources from the web. A few optimization tips that are really important. Uh, viewport size, unprojection versus jiglib, sprites in 3D, uh, vertice number, transparency, mit mapping, and stage quality. All important concepts when it comes to optimizing your games for the web. I'll talk about the book, and I've actually optimized a game in the book, and there's a huge number of optimization tips here you want to pay attention as you build a game. Of course, if you apply everything, what you'll end up with at the end is a very ugly game. So you don't want that. You're, there's a trade-off between beauty and speed, and you want to keep all that in mind. And so make sure you go to Chapter 10 of the book and read about all the optimization tips that I've put in there. You'll find them very useful, and a number of them you'll use. Hey, let's play a game. Here's Cue Ball, really popular game, fun game. And what it is is basically two balls and a little sprite that's running around the ball. Now, he looks 3D, but he's not 3D. You know, that the, the, the uh, surface itself is 3D. So this field is in 3D. Uh, but this mouse inside this ball is not 3D. It's, it's actually a sprite. So what this cue ball developer is doing, he's combining 2D sprites with a 3D surface. And that's really cool because your mind engages. Your visual cortex turns on inside of this 3D environment but you get a 3D look without the vertice hit that a full 3D image would take. And so what this guy does, he comes along here and he hits this other ball and he tries to uh, shove it into this Carlotta, um, I'm not very good at the game, he tries to shove it right into this Carlotta object right here. Let's see if we can win something. So you have this ball hitting a ball, when it hits the cup you win a, win a prize and you keep playing the game over and over again. I finally got it. And there's a scoreboard and all these neat little things happening up here to keep track of the time and the number of cups that you win. So simple game, but actually a very interesting game. Another thing I want to point out here that's very important is this whole idea of unprojection. So once again, he's got all these boundaries that he's coded in here. He's not using Jiglet, but he's using unprojection. And what is unprojection? Well, when you're in 3D, you don't really know where you're at. Uh, you have to, in a sense, shoot a ray into your uh, canvas, and you have to intersect that with a plane and your camera, and that gives you the position of your mouse. And so this ball is actually following this unprojected uh, stream. So with every iteration, uh, you have to unproject uh, onto this uh, uh, surface here so you actually know where, where you are, and you can actually have 3D gameplay. And so that's what's going on there. Let's hit a few of the tips of what we talked about here with this particular game. So what's important here, and what the guy, tricks, some of the tricks this guy has used, is he combines sprites with the 3D environment. 3D turns on your visual cortex. The sprite saves you all the vertices that you're going to need to make that game run. So he's actually reducing his vertice number, so isn't that pretty cool? Uh, he's not using Jiggly in this particular uh, example, but he is using Unprojection. And he's not really worried about viewport size because he's done so much optimization. So he's doing optimization. And once again, he's running in a, a low quality. You've got to be careful about that stage quality. A lot of people want uh, to get the highest quality they can. But with 3D, each time you up the quality, you, you actually up the number of passes that your processor has to make in order for that game to play. Let me take you to chapter uh, 12 of the book. I want to point out the same technique has been used by Seb Belial. So in Chapter 12 of the book, I discuss building 3D websites, and I, I love talking about Seb Delal's stuff. You know, he's one of my heroes, and I've actually, he's got a great website, and you want to follow him. He actually does this as a business, and what he's done, he's built this wonderful game that's actually being used for TV, and the name of the game is Big and Small. It's created by Plugin Media, and what they're doing, let me, let me point this out to you. This is actually a 3D room. This is a 3D bed, and this is a 3D environment, but this little guy right here, he's not 3D. He's a sprite, and boy, wouldn't he take a lot of vertices to render. So what they're doing is they're optimizing their game by uh, basically, as we did in Q-Ball, combining, sp combining sprites with a 3D environment. So that's one of the cool tricks you want to use when you build 3D games. All right, let's go to the next game. Now, if you're in America, we call this soccer, but if you're in England, you're going to call this football. And it's a really fun game, and let's go ahead and play it. Basically, what happens is, is this ball is uh, oscillating back and forth, and you have this little panel here that shows you where the ball is. So what you do is you hit the space bar to stop it, and then once you stop it, it oscillates up and down, and you want to basically have the oscillation at the right angle, so when you shoot the ball, it'll hit the net, 
And I shut the ball, and I, I overshot, and it gives me a message, hey, you missed, and you feel real sad about that. But the ball comes back, and you can try again. So it, you always get a chance. To, Yay, and I missed again. So you keep playing the game. Now, what is the, the secret to this game? There's actually uh, three secrets a guy is using to optimize this game for the web. Number one is, is he is using uh, Jiglib for this particular game, I believe. Uh, but number two is this is not a 3D environment. It looks like a 3D environment, but it's not. All this is right here is a JPEG that he's using in the background. This is a really cool trick because he's not processing that full environment back there. So, so why does he? He's just got a crowd here and an image. What he's actually done is he faded the field. This actually looks like there's a, a 3D perspective field, but it's not. It's just a, it's just a, a photo uh, trick. He's actually just faded this field to make it look 3D. And then what he's done, he's actually set a 3D plane down here, you know, that you don't see. It's an invisible 3D plane. And so the ball is actually on the 3D plane, so it follows this projection. It doesn't care that there's an image in the background, but you think you're in 3D. And once again, he's, he's combining sprites with 3D because this guy is not actually 3D, of course. He's just a sprite that's being played like a movie clip over and over again. Really cool trick. And you can actually take a look at this image if you want to by grabbing us it from your cache. Now what do I mean grabbing things from your cache? This is a very sensitive topic, but I'm going to talk about it because it's very important for new developers. I always say if you want to know how to write good code, look at good code. And that code is being given to you each time you download an SWF to the web. Okay, let me say, be careful. Never put passwords in your applications because everything you put on the web can be seen. And let me demonstrate that to you real quick. If you go to Firefox and say I'm looking for an application, for example, look at Bowling for Buddies. So I got Bowling for Buddies here, a really cool game. But I come into my URL and I type about cache in Firefox. And what will happen is that will take me directly to my cache. And in my cache are all the memory resources for that game. So everything that's in that game has now appeared in my cache. And I can come along here and extract all those resources from the web. And I can come in here and do decompilers. I can grab images. I mean, it's just all here. I can even search it by hitting Control F. So I've hit Control F. I can type dot SWF. So wherever there's SWF, that'll come up in the screen. I can bring that into a decompiler and look at all that code. So let me tell you, do not put any social security numbers, any credit cards, any passwords in any SWF. It is not a secure environment, and anyone can look at it. And you know what? If you're going to look and not touch, that's great. But if you're going to recompile other people's applications and call them yours, you just violate the law. So uh, use this as an educational tool, you know, but be honest with, with your work. And, and I always encourage people that. And people wonder, why do I say that? Because there's a lot of hours that people put into designing and building. And you want to build your own stuff anyway. And actually, you know, from experience, it just takes a lot more time to decompile someone else's work than to build your own. And really all you want to do is see how people did things and, and get cool ideas from the web. And that's why I would encourage that. I've actually used uh, decompiling more for my own stuff than other people's stuff. It turns out I'll put something on the web and I do so much work to every once in a while, I'll lose my own applications. And I'll have to go to the web and decomp decompile my own stuff. There's very useful tools. You need to know how to use them. And it'll help you in your development as well. So uh, that's about getting stuff from the web and uh, using the uh, about cache idea. So here's an image I pulled from the web, and you can see it's a, it's a trick. This is not really a true 3D environment. It's just basically a faded background. And he's using an invisible plane to run his ball across it. So let's play the game one more time. And so once again, you can see this guy's got this 2D background. All right, that he's making you think that's 3D just by putting an image in the background. He's got an invisible plane here. And he's got a sprite blocking his ball. So it all looks 3D, but it's not. It's just a very simple 3D plane that he's shooting a ball across and uh, using a little bit of jiggly to do some blocking. So, I mean, there's a lot of tricks here to actually optimize and speed your games up and to make things look 3D uh, when they're not by combining sprites, images, and uh, a 3D environment. Hey, let's turn on the visual cortex of our brain, and next time we'll finish up with Bowling for Buddies. Thanks a lot. This was Mike Lively. Hey. Have fun playing those web games.